What's going on guys? Today we're going to learn how to create this awesome lens ball effect using just our shape tool and a couple of basic brushes. So let's get into it. What's going on guys? My name is Brendan and if you love photography and photo editing then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more great tutorials just like this one. Now if you're wanting to follow along with the image that we're creating in today's tutorial then make sure to hit the link in the description below to get access to this photo so then we can start creating some really cool stuff together. So with all that out of the way let's get into creating this lens ball effect. So the first thing to consider when creating this effect is finding a nice image that will offer a cool reflection inside of the lens ball. So in this case we're going to have a lot of cool sand dunes and light sources and stuff like that so that's why I think that this image is gonna work really well for this tutorial again if you're wanting to download this photo for yourself then just follow the link in the description below the first thing that we'll do is unlock our background layer here and then we're gonna create an ellipse so going down here to our shape tool we're gonna go and click and grab our ellipse tool we don't have to change any of our settings up here necessarily. We're just going to want to make sure our stroke is set to transparent here. We're just going to create a nice ellipse here, holding shift to create a perfect circle. And we're just going to pick a size that we want our final lens ball to be. So in this case, I'm going to pick something about here. So that looks really good to me. And now this is going to be our template going forward. We don't need it right now, so I'm going to just turn off that layer. Now clicking on our background layer, I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and I'm just going to select a gigantic and general area of what I want reflecting inside of my lens ball. So that looks pretty good to me there and with that selection active on our background layer, which is our image, I'm going to just press command or control J to duplicate that layer and put that selection on its own layer. With that layer one selected, I'm just going to call this to lens ball and I'm going to press Command or Control T to transform that lens ball layer, right click and go down here to flip vertical. I just think that flipping the image vertical kind of adds a cool effect to the lens ball. I'm going to commit to that, grab my move tool and I'm just going to move this down into the center of a frame somewhere like this. Now once our image is in the center of the frame we want to go and add a sphere effect onto this photo. To do that all we have to do is go up to filter, down here to distort and over here to spherize. For this photo, I'm going to be sticking at 100% here. That looks fine for me. I'm going to click OK. And then it drastically distorts our photo. And maybe I'll just do it one more time just to add that effect a bit more. So to add that effect on once again, we can go up here to Filter. And this time, since we just want to apply the same settings, we're just going to click our Recent Filter, which is the one at the top here. Just click Sphere Eyes. And then we'll add that on once again, like so. So now we have a really crazy distortion going on. Now with this crazy distortion, we are going to turn back on our ellipse layer. We're going to hold command or control, hover over that layer thumbnail, click on that to activate a selection around our ellipse. Now with our lens ball layer selected and our ellipse selection active, we are going to add that to a layer mask. So now if I turn off that ellipse layer, you notice that the distortion from our lens ball layer is just now confined to the ellipse. Now I want to be able to reconfigure what's inside of this ellipse without actually moving it around. So I'm going to click this little chain icon so now I can move the image independently from its layer mask. So clicking on my image, I'm going to grab my move tool and just rescale this down so then now I can position it in a certain area that I want. So something like that looks really cool to me. I'm going to commit to those changes and now we're well on our way. Now the next thing that we want to do is add a little bit of a glassy reflection on the outside to make this look like it actually is glass and not just some cutout from our background layer. So to do that, all we have to do is duplicate our ellipse layer. By pressing Command or Control and J, we're going to have an ellipse copy. We're just going to drag that underneath our main ellipse and I'm just going to turn that layer on and I'm going to call this to glass reflection. Now with the glass reflection layer selected, I'm going to grab my shape tool by pressing U on my keyboard and I'm going to change its fill from black over here to white. Once you have a white ellipse created like this, we are going to add a layer mask to this and we're just going to move this ellipse over just a little. So now it's exposing just a little of the image behind. So we want to position this wherever the light source is coming from. Since the light source is coming from here, we're going to position our edge right over on the opposite side of our lens ball. Once you have positioned it in a general area like this, we're going to grab our brush tool and we are just going to 
paint out pretty much all of this white. So on our layer mask, painting black with a soft brush at 100% opacity, I'm just going to mask out all this stuff until I just have a little bit of an edge going along the bottom side of my lips here. So something like that looks good for me and I might just grab my move tool and bump this down a little just to have it be a little bit closer to my edge. Now once you're happy with the position of your little reflection here, we're going to click back onto our layer thumbnail and we're going to add a gaussian blur just to soften that edge a little. So to add that blur, we'll just go up here to filter, down here to blur, over here to gaussian blur. Then we can just click rasterize and we just want to add a small blur radius, so about 1 to 2 pixels. In this case, I'll just stick it at about 1.3 pixels. That looks good for me. We'll click OK. So now we have a little bit of a glass reflection on our lens ball. The next thing we want to do is add a highlight along the edges of our ellipse. So the easiest way to do that is once again, we are just going to duplicate this ellipse layer and add a stroke to it. So duplicating that ellipse layer by pressing Command or Control J, I'm going to drag that once again underneath because this ellipse layer is just our reference, it's our template. Everything that we're working with for our lens ball effect, I'm just dragging below that original ellipse layer. Now I'm going to rename our duplicated ellipse layer to highlight. And I'm going to make that layer visible. Now grabbing my shape tool once again by pressing U on my keyboard, I'm going to make sure my fill is set to transparent, so it's just this little white box with the red line through it. And then I'm going to add a stroke with white. And then with that pixel radius, I'm going to change it to about 10. You can add that to whatever you want, but the pixel amount for your stroke is just going to determine how thick that line is around the outside of your ellipse. The other thing to consider is make sure that you have a solid line selected. If you have one of these other options selected, you'll have either a dotted or dashed line like one of these options here. Anyways, once you have created this stroke like so, we're going to add a layer mask, grab our brush tool, painting black at 100% opacity with a soft brush. I'm just going to mask out everything with that stroke except for what it would be directly hit by our light source. So since once again our light source is coming from this direction, we want to mask pretty much everything out except for just a little bit around this edge here. In this case, this looks perfect for me. We've added a nice highlight onto the edge of our lens ball just with a white stroke and then we masked out all the excess so now it's only appearing in the area that the sunlight is coming from. Now our lens ball is coming together really nicely but the next thing that we have to do is just add a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this layer to shadow. With this shadow layer selected I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to make sure black is selected and I'm actually going to quickly bring the shadow layer down to my lens ball, just above my lens ball layer, and I'm going to clip it to my lens ball layer by right clicking and going up here to create clipping mask. Now our shadow layer will only show up within the parameters of our lens ball. So with our black brush selected, I'm just going to paint around the edge of the opposing side from our sun source. So since our sun is coming from this way, we want to add our shadow on the opposite end of that lens ball. You can add as much shadow as you'd like, but it's totally up to you. So for me, I'm happy with how this looks currently, and I'm just going to maybe bring down my fill slider just a little, just so it's a little less aggressive. Something like that looks really nice to me. The next thing I might do is just bring down the opacity of my glass reflection. So clicking on my glass reflection layer, I'm going to just go to my opacity here, just bring that down a little so it's a little bit less in our face and it blends into our lens ball a little better. Now our lens ball is almost complete, but since we want it to be floating, we're going to add a little bit of a shadow just underneath our lens ball. Going back behind our lens ball, clicking on our background layer, we're going to create a new layer. And we'll call this to lens ball shadow. With that lens ball shadow layer selected, we'll just grab our brush tool, make sure black is set to our foreground color, and we'll just rescale our brush so we have a nice large area, and we'll just click once so we have a little black spot. With that black spot, we're going to grab our move tool, and we're just going to hold alt and shift to just pinch and stretch that out to make it look as if it's a little bit more flat. And we'll place it somewhere just directly under where our lens ball would be floating. So something like this looks good. Commit to that, and then we'll change its blending mode from normal down here to soft light. 
and then we can bring its fill slider down just a little bit until we have a desired hardness of a shadow. So in this case, I'm very happy with that amount of shadow. And with just a few simple layers, we have successfully created our own lens ball in Photoshop. I find that utilizing this initial ellipse layer that we created at the very beginning just helps to streamline this whole process so we don't have to constantly create new selections and everything. All of our layers and layer masks are based off of this one ellipse layer. We don't have to do anything complicated. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more great tutorials just like this one. Now if you guys went ahead and created this effect for yourself, I would love to see how it turned out so make sure to tag me at burnwills when you upload and I'll be sharing some of my favorites on my Instagram story. Now if you enjoyed today's tutorial then make sure to check out last week's tutorial creating the iMessage bubble effect and be sure to utilize the awesome asset pack that I created for you guys to streamline the entire iMessage bubble process. If you want to check that out click up in the top corner of this video right now or I'll leave a link in the description below as always. If you're still thirsty for more creative learning content then make sure to check out my blog at bewillcreative.com where you can access tons of free tutorials and photography articles to help get those creative juices flowing. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you for today. Again, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time. See you then.